Hi. This is Digitone Keys. The keyboard is velocity sensitive, and it breathes completely new life into Digitone's sound engine. But velocity sensitive keys aren't the only thing that's new here. It also has aftertouch, and there are hundreds of new presets that all respond to velocity, aftertouch, and the mod wheel. Also new is a hold function for each of the four tracks separately, and these eight new encoders, which make Mayhem much more accessible. This video will go over everything that's new and all the old stuff. Let's get started. Let's start with an overview of the layout and the synth. Digitone Keys is an 8-voice, multi-timbral digital synth that includes both FM and subtractive synthesis engines, as well as multiple send effects. The 8 voices can be split up among 4 sequencing tracks and the keyboard. Digitone is multi-timbral, meaning that each of its voices can potentially play a completely different sound, and you can even get more sounds per track in the sequencer. Aside from the four tracks you can hear, Digitone has four additional tracks for MIDI sequencing, and the keyboard can also be used to play external gear live. It has chorus, delay, and reverb, which are set up as master effects, which means that they can be applied as sends from any of the four sequencing tracks, as well as to audio coming in through the audio inputs on the back. While we're on the topic of connectivity, aside from the headphone and main outs, there are stereo outputs for each of the tracks, as well as the audio input that I mentioned before. You've got expression control in, both for a sustain pedal and an expression pedal, MIDI in, out, and through, and USB, and of course, power. The USB port can be used both for MIDI notes and parameter control, as well as for multi-track audio using Overbridge. The keyboard feels great. It isn't weighted, but the action feels solid, and it has aftertouch. Right. It's three octaves and can be transposed up and down an additional three octaves. The overall build is metal. It's pretty heavy and feels solid. Let's look at the controls, starting from the left, aside from changing octaves and master volume control. You've got a springy pitch bend wheel and a mod wheel. Both wheels, including the pitch bend, can be used as macro controls to control up to four parameters in Digitone. The central section is very much like the old Digitone, except for a handy sound browser button, and the track note button has been moved here. If you're not familiar with this layout, overall, these two rows let you sequence steps, select patterns and banks, and can also be used as a secondary keyboard. The MIDI button toggles controlling the MIDI tracks and the synth tracks. The function key acts as a shift for all the things that are labeled underneath the buttons. And the eight encoders have different functions based on the screen you're on and are typically arranged like the on-screen parameters. So for example, this knob controls release. In this case, this knob controls volume. And if I move to a different screen, say the filter, this knob will control the envelope. This knob will control the filter envelope release. All the encoders are push encoders, meaning that you can turn them regularly for fine-tune control or press them down and turn for fast and coarse movements. Moving on to what's new and what's going on above the keyboard, each of these five buttons has a main function and a secondary shift function. Let's go over these five controls. This is a hold button that will simply hold notes for you. Right? And this will hold an arpeggiated pattern as well. So that's hold. Using shift on this activates portamento. You can set portamento time. And in the sound setup menu, you have quite a few additional portamento controls. We saw this guy. This turns on the arpeggiator. And holding shift and pressing this takes you to the arpeggiator menu. 
This third button activates multi-map. Now, by default, the keyboard plays whatever sound is on the active track. The map key activates keyboard mapping, which lets you map various portions of the keyboard as splits, either to different sounds or to different MIDI channels, including a different sound per key if you want. You configure the map settings with the function key right over here. You go into edit multi-map. I actually made a whole tutorial about multi-mapping on the Analog 4. This system is identical, so you can go ahead and check that out if you want to understand how multi-map works. The external setup button, aside from making things nice and purpley, will disconnect the keyboard from the synth from local control and let you use it to control external MIDI instruments. And this applies to this section as well, of course. Pressing this button with the notes will take you to the track note menu. This lets you transpose a track, set a scale for it, and if you turn chord mode on, which you can also do by holding shift and pressing this button, then you can play entire chords based on whatever this is set to. Finally, new to Digitone keys are these eight new encoders. Now, they don't give you additional functionality, but rather they replicate functionality from the menus over here. So for example, ratio B is this parameter and harmonics is this parameter. And then the level of uh, envelope A is this guy over here, right? You can see a change. So the idea is to have, for example, filter cutoff, always accessible here, regardless of which page I'm on or resonance. Right? And if I go to that page, you can see it move over here. So there are eight functions baked in and you can go ahead and assign eight additional ones to whatever you like. So for example, I could uh, choose to assign this first one to, uh, let's say, well, any one of these parameters, right? But let's just say reverb decay time, right? So now I could have this go to infinity right away or tone it down. And I've got this parameter immediately accessible here. Okay, so those are pretty much the things that are special to Digitone keys compared to the regular Digitone alongside with the connectivity in the back. Now let's talk about the FM and subtractive synth engine and the electron sequencer. If you're familiar with those two, feel free to skip right ahead to the pros and cons. On the synth side, each of Digitone's eight voices starts out with an FM synth engine and there are three basic pages where you can control all its parameters and then that audio gets passed on to a subtractive filter, and then you've got control over the VCA envelope and send effects. There are also a few voice and master drive controls. Let's briefly cover FM synthesis, and I'll start by contrasting it with subtractive synthesis. So typically with subtractive synthesis, you start out with a harmonically rich waveform, like this one, and then you filter it out. And there is sort of like an additive element with resonance. But generally you take out harmonics and that's how you change your sound. FM synthesis on the other hand starts with a lonely sine wave and as we gradually modulate its pitch things start to happen. Initially it's sort of like vibrato but as we go up the rates harmonics get added. So we're adding harmonics by modulating the frequency of an oscillator rather than subtracting harmonics with a filter. So for this to work, you need a minimum of two oscillators. One is a modulator that's changing the frequency of the other and you're hearing the other. The oscillator you're hearing is called a carrier and the oscillator that's moving or modulating the pitch of the carrier is called a modulator. Digitone has four of these. They're called A, B1, B2, and C. B1 and B2 are lumped together because they have one depth envelope control and they're patched together in things called algorithms. There are eight of these. 
this is easier than you might think. Algorithm is sort of like a scary word. An algorithm simply determines which of the oscillators controls the other and which of the oscillators are output so that we can hear them. The oscillators that you can hear are routed out to outputs X and Y and you can change the mix between X and Y. So right now we're hearing carrier C, but if we move this knob, we'll slowly start to hear oscillator B, then back to C, or any mix of them, you can see that as I change the frequencies of B or C, right, we can hear both of them at the same time. In this particular algorithm, because oscillator or operator A isn't routed to any of the outputs, if I change its frequency, we won't hear it. The only way to hear what oscillator or operator A is doing is by allowing it to modulate oscillator C or the carrier here. You do that by allowing a modulation level. So as I increase this, right, we can now hear what operator A is doing to carrier C. And the depth impacts the modulation. Zero doesn't let you hear anything, and all the way to things like this. Now the nice thing is that, aside from moving the modulation depth manually, you also have an envelope that helps you control it, so that you can have Digitone move it over time for you. Right, so right now, the attack is opening up the mod depth, and I could uh, decrease it back, right, or have it end up at a different level. So the envelope lets you modulate depth over time. And that's why I use the terms operator and oscillator interchangeably for oscillators or operators A, B1, and B2, because they have envelopes associated with them in FM lingo, an oscillator plus an envelope equals an operator. While we're on the topic of envelopes and modulation, there's plenty of them to go around in Digitone other than these two envelopes for operators A and B1 and B2, you've got a filter envelope, an amp envelope, and two more LFOs, which can behave as envelopes as well. A nice twist that Electron have added to Digitone's FM engine is that aside from regular sine waves, it can also generate sounds with additional harmonics in the oscillator itself. So take a listen and look at the scopes to what happens as I turn this knob. Additional harmonics get added, then taken away, then added differently. And these all obviously sound differently when you modulate them. This little squiggly line in the corner of an operator means that it's feeding back onto itself. So if I take, for example, this algorithm where operator B is feedbacking onto itself. If we listen to it standalone, it sounds like this, but as we increase feedback, you can see it turns into sort of like a sawtooth wave, and then ultimately, out into noise. Right, so that's what feedback does to an audible oscillator, and it does interesting things to an operator that modulates other oscillators as well. A few more functions of the synth engine. There's a detune option. The last important thing you need to know about FM synthesis is that if you want to be able to play notes musically up and down the keyboard, you need to maintain a harmonic ratio between the modulator and the carrier. Luckily, Digitone helps us maintain these ratios, so you can't actually set individual frequencies for the operators, they all relate to the note that you press. Which means that as you let madness ensue, right, you can still play whatever comes out across the keyboard. Finally, if all this FM synthesis is too much for you, you can always either use the presets or just hit a parameter screen and yes, it will randomize the parameters for you. And who knows what comes out, right? But it might be interesting. Or not. Trust me, any sound with a little bit of reverb it's gonna sound nice, right? 
Okay, let's move briefly down the synthesis chain. We talked about the filter before. There are actually two filters in here. A base width filter, which has a simple low pass and high pass filter. And then the uh, more advanced filter, which has a filter envelope, a few more filter types and slopes. And of course, resonance, as we saw before. It has its own dedicated envelope as well. Finally, aside from the typical amp envelope, right, you've got panning, drive, and effects sends per track. And the effects here sound really nice. You're already hearing the reverb. And this is a send, by the way, so if we want a longer reverb, we need to go to the reverb page and increase its decay time. Aside from reverb, you've got a really nice chorus. And again, you can determine its parameters here. And of course, a delay. So this is the delay send. And you've got delay controls here. screen on the synthesis engine is the LFO page. You've got two LFOs with a bunch of destinations. And if I choose them, you can sort of have a preview of the impact of the LFO on the various parameters. Nice. Cool. So that is the synthesis engine of Digitone. One last thing on the audio chain is the master control function LFO. You get to this, which lets you control the panning and level of the audio coming in through the inputs in the back, as well as their send effects. And then you also have a master overdrive. A final synth feature worth mentioning is the control you have over unison and voice stealing using these hot lips over here. So by default, any track can steal any voices from any other track, but if you have a drone or a pad going and you wanna protect the voices in a particular track, you can do that with this key, just sort of lock voices. Uh, let's say I wanna lock three voices to this track and then no other track will steal these three voices. This page also has the unison function which obviously uses more voices but can be quite interesting sonically. So that's Digitone's synth. Let's take a quick look at the sequencer, which has everything Electron is famous for. The sequencer is pattern-based. Every pattern can have up to 64 steps. You view 16 steps at any given time, and you can page through the different up to four pages per sequence. Let's keep this sequence short for demonstration purposes. Here we go, 16 steps will do. Sequencing is quite simple. There is grid sequencing where you hold a step and then choose which notes you want to be on that step. Right, and then play it back. The sequencer supports parameter locking, which means changing a parameter of a particular step. So if I wanted this step to be longer, I would just do this, right? 
You can also record notes live. You do that by either pressing record and play quantized or unquantized recording. So quite simple to either play in live or step sequence. As of this firmware version, you can't yet record aftertouch mod or pitch bend information into the sequencer. I asked Electron about this and they mentioned they're aware of it and that it's on the roadmap. You can actually sequence pitch bend mod and aftertouch with the MIDI tracks. So hopefully the technology is there and it will be coming soon. The sequencer also supports motion sequencing and parameter locks. So let's say for example, I wanted to activate a filter on this sequence. Right? I just motion sequence the filter and you can tell which steps have parameter locks on them by the fact that they're blinking. Now it's a good thing that I filtered those high notes out, but if I ever want them back, I can just hold a step or more and then change the filter frequency for that particular step if I wanted. So let's say do this craziness. Right? So parameter locks can happen either by recording them live or by step sequencing them in. The sequencer also supports sound locks, which means that each step can play a different sound from a pool of 128 sounds per project. So let me explain. Typically, a track in Electron will play just one sound. You can pick any sound you want for that track. So track one can have this sound and let's choose this sound for track two. All right, so now this track does this and this track does this. But aside from this being the main sound for this track, I can also go on a step-by-step -step basis and choose different sounds for that particular step. Now I'm just doing this randomly, so I hope you'll forgive me for whatever comes out. Let's hit play. Heart, my friends. But that's the idea that you can have literally a different sound on a per step basis in a single track. You can use this uh, typically for drums or beats or anything else. Now, by the way, you can store a total of 2048 sounds in the machine's memory. So if I go into the sound browser, you can see this is bank A, and this is bank B, and this is bank C, and there are plenty of uh, presets per bank, 2048 in total. The sound pool is what you can change on a per step basis in a particular project. I won't go over the process of uh, putting sounds in the pool, but you can either view that or view the plus drive and then move sounds from one to the other. The last nifty thing that the electron sequencer can do is trig conditions. So let's maybe clear some of the steps in this masterpiece. Right now I've got just these two steps in the sequence. What trig conditions does is let you have a step not necessarily trigger every loop, but based on certain conditions, say either um, the first time a loop runs or not the first time it runs, a certain percentage of the time, let's say only 50% of the time, right, which doesn't always happen, obviously, and then you can have it happen every one or or uh, one of uh, several loops, so one of every five loops, and so on. And then I sort of skipped in the beginning. You can also have it be part of a fill or not be heard when there's a fill, and a few other conditions you can read up on in the manual if you like. So all of that is the Electron sound sequencer. Completely parallel to that is the MIDI sequencer. You've got four MIDI tracks. Each MIDI track can sequence up to eight notes, but it can also send program changes, uh, pitch bend, aftertouch, mod wheel information, like I mentioned before, breath controller, as well as modulate up to eight CC parameters, which you can determine here. Final cherry on top in the MIDI sequencer is a MIDI LFO. It would be really nice, by the way, to have an arpeggiator for the MIDI sequencer Electron. If you're listening, please add one. Before we wrap up, I wanted to cover a few nice performance functions. You can change a parameter across all four tracks by holding the MIDI button, which acts as a control all and changing the parameter. In this case, the high pass filter. You can save a pattern into temporary space 
and then significantly mess it up. And then reload it back into safety. And while you can't create and save songs out of patterns, you can chain patterns simply by holding one and then holding a few more in the order that you want them to play. Okay, let's talk about Overbridge. It gives you five stereo audio inputs, the four tracks and the line input in the back. You can see the stereo tracks being recorded here. This is the plugin or VST that lets you look at and edit any of the Digitone's parameters. You can change the parameters either here or on the panel. visually here and when craziness ensues function and no will always reload the original pattern let's take a look at the sound browser really useful way to see what's in the sound pool and what's in your overall sound banks and moving presets back and forth is as easy as drag and drop. All right, let's talk about pros and cons. The first thing is the elephant in the room, and that is this layout. Now I have to say, it takes getting used to. When you play the keyboard, your eyes and attention are front and center. Synths are built with the controls above the keyboard for a reason, and the pitch and mod wheels are typically close by. Placing the controls on the left makes sense because it lets you continue playing with your right hand, which I guess is the one more frequently used on keys, and the eight programmable encoders let you keep functions you need nearby. If you're sitting down and reaching for the encoders, you can still see the screen underneath your left hand, but if you're standing up, you might block the screen as you turn the encoders. So bottom line, the layout takes getting used to. On the pro side, if you plan to sequence other gear, it's nice not to have a big synth dominate your desk and leave room for gear behind it. More on the pro side, attaching a keyboard to Digitone, whether an external one or one that's fixed to it, truly opens this up as an instrument. And the features that Electron added to Digitone keys deliver on a fully integrated expressive experience. I just didn't use Digitone this way before. Having four arpeggiators with four holds, one for each track, I think really opens the instrument up, in addition to the built-in sequencer, of course. The cherry on top are the hundreds of new presets. Digitone sounded great before, and the new expressive presets add an entirely new dimension to it. With a four-track sequencer and audio effects processing, Digitone keys can become an excellent brain, sounds, and effects engine for a multi-instrument setup. If you have any questions about Digitone Keys, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. If you want to learn more about synthesis, consider checking out my book available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful, and remember to click the bell after you hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.